Well, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to review an introduction to direct laryngoscopy uh, and a little bit into video, but specifically to a Macintosh uh, styled video laryngoscopy. Uh, let's uh, get started. So the first thing I want to enter in is when I talk about intubation uh, is that, I, uh, that I'm a paramedic. Uh, I've intubated uh, lots of patients over my 20 years of my career. Uh, but the people that have the largest voice uh, in, in intubation would be anesthesiologists who intubate hundreds of patients uh, every year. Uh, there's some great voices in emergency airway management. Uh, George Kovach and Ron Walls uh, would be uh, probably the loudest currently uh, around emergency airway management. So lots of great uh, individuals that we can learn from. I'm going to introduce you into some of the basics, uh, some of the common mistakes, um, but there is a diverse uh, amount of perspectives. It's interesting how you can have one competent, competent anesthesiologist that you go into an OR in this room uh, and they'll uh, tell you to intubate one way uh, and then you'll go to the next room and you'll do something slightly uh, in, in, uh, just as you were instructed uh, and then the anesthesiologist might correct uh, your hand position or slight differences. So there, there are some matters of opinion, there's some facts here, um, uh, but definitely listen to all those with lots of experience uh, that they can help you build this in to become competent in this practice uh, of uh, intubation. Um, so when we're intubating a patient, um, uh, it's important to understand what we're doing is we're trying to create a straight line from your upper patient's upper incisors down to their Adam's apple, the thyroid cartilage to the glottic open. That laryngeal axis is the most important um, as you approach. And we're going to talk about positioning your patient here uh, in the right uh, way uh, to uh, intubate. Uh, and the position that we want to have our patient in that will make intubation easier uh, is in sniffing position, uh, where ear uh, is aligned uh, with sternum, ear hole aligned with sternum, and head tilt uh, tip back, uh, essentially looking at the ceiling often. Sometimes if the patient's, uh, so in many patients, this mannequin doesn't work very well to demonstrate because he has one vertebrae rather than human anatomy that has seven. Uh, so you can't put him into uh, ideal sniffing position. Nonetheless, head lift really does help. <clears throat> so um, uh, in order to get a patient in a sniffing position, some obese patients that are lots of tissue on their chest, uh, we need to ramp them up. So some padding under their shoulders and then we bring their head up once again, ear hole to the left of sternum, where we have enough room that we can put the laryngoscope into the patient's mouth without the handle running into the patient's chest. So if you run into the, the handles running into the patient's chest, then that's a good indication that we got to ramp, do some padding under the shoulders, and then bring the head out so that we can actually get uh, the laryngoscope into their mouth. Um, so uh, those are the elements of... Um, uh, 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 of and, and the other thing that I mentioned that he doesn't demonstrate well is we would like not to have a closed angle between our as we look at our jaw to, to our torso. We would like the head out. Uh, heads uh, heads that are down uh, looking down uh, aren't as easily intubated. Uh, so those would be key uh, things. Uh, so we want to allow for that base of necks flexion back. And often that's done with your non-dominant or, or with your right hand because the laryngoscopes typically held in the left hand. Now, when you're holding your laryngoscope, uh, I would encourage you to hold lower down on the handle um, to as a means to keep us from levering back. Now, when we talk about levering, it's when you tip the handle back. Uh, and I'd like to talk about what is actually happening. So if I have that blade across the entirety of the tongue and I apply pressure in the direction of the handle, then uh, as we move that uh, handle uh, in that direction, the force is applied to the entirety of the tongue. When you rock back, uh, it, you're applying all of that pressure just to the very tip of the blade. So I realize that people will talk about that you can lever back and break teeth, but far before you would break teeth, you're going to end up traumatizing the soft tissue, the mucous membranes of your oral pharynx, larynx, um, uh, as you try to intubate a patient. So really important that we apply pressure in the direction of the handle, which allows us to pull evenly uh, as we lift that patient's tongue and, and seek to displace it into um, 
uh, the, the mandibular space. So we're trying to pull their tongue up into their uh, lower jaw, um, but in the direction of the handle. So low down on the handle and put force applied. Think of the handle as an arrow that we should only be pro uh, applying significant force in the direction of the handle. Once we kind of get down, occasionally you'll see little tiny flicks that will just try increasing different uh, position, but no large uh, movements uh, with, the, uh, with the laryngoscope handle. Uh, and definitely if you're intubating a patient uh, uh, in a human patient, you don't want the angle to be pointing back further like it's pointing towards the ceiling. Uh, the opposite corner of the wall uh, is your, the, where the wall meets the ceiling. Uh, that would be as far as you'd want that handle to tip back uh, as you're applying pressure uh, to it. Um, when, uh, so, uh, as far as, uh, when you're using a intubated, if you're using a stylet, uh, the stylet should be inside the tube, not poking at the end and shaped like a hockey stick. And you can kind of picture what we're using that stylet for is getting the tube up. Now up in our perspective, it's anterior towards the front of the patient, but in our perspective as we're intubating, it's thinking towards the ceiling. Uh, is what we're uh, thinking. So you want to get around that corner. So you want that uh, to be uh, that that curve to be at the end if you're using a stylet, and that's the shape uh, that a bougie should be in. Now this uh, bougie is a little bit uh, bent, uh, but you want that tip to be up uh, is the ideal place. Now uh, I do have a preference. I do like pocket bougies because they're already bent and in good shape for that. But you're really looking for that distal end. Uh, to be the part that's shaped well. Uh, tubes and things that go into uh, the trachea should be uh, kept sterile, so should be inside the sterile packaging uh, as we progress. <clears throat> I'm trying to stay out of the video here. I've got a video, as you can notice, uh, right over my right shoulder, so as we're going through intubation, that will be helpful. Um, now, positioning self. Now, patient, we like the head of the bed, patient right up to the top of the Ahead. So put their occiput, uh, occiput right at the uh, at the top of the bed, uh, so that we can easily manipulate the head. If we need to, sometimes we'll put padding in. Sometimes we'll just edge our belt ahead and hold the head up into position where we want. Uh, as far as when you're intubating, we like that patient. Uh, their nose in sniffing position to be below your belt line. It, it's easier if you need to, to come down a bit. Now, obviously, uh, standing above a patient with the patient on the floor isn't a great depth, but what I see too often is a stretch or too high, and then when you do head lift, you can't see or can't get high enough, and you're trying to grow taller. So nose of the patient at belt height uh, works well. Um, your position, uh, often your assistant, uh, is off to your right side so they can hand your tube into your right hand uh, and, and do some maneuvers there for you as you need. Um, so the let's talk about uh, actually uh, direct laryngoscopy. So I'm going to use this uh, video laryngoscopy. Video laryngoscopy. Now this is a Macintosh shaped blade. It doesn't have any hyper acute angle. It's essentially exactly the same uh, is this one, as you can see in the camera, uh, that they line up uh, perfectly. So very similar blade. Uh, and video laryngoscopy has changed uh, practice. Now your first attempt in most patients should be a video. Uh, exceptions would be patients like uh, that have lots of blood uh, in their air, but they can't be managed that might obscure the camera. Uh, but now, uh, used to be very expensive, now a $100 disposable device. So no reason you shouldn't have one uh, in every place that you're, uh, that's intubating patients to have a video laryngoscope, uh, a laryngoscope available. When we insert the blade into the patient's mouth, uh, I, what you'll find is if you just take the patient's head and tip their head back, uh, now, he doesn't tip back as well as I would, but you tip their head back, and that will cause the mouth to open and make it easy uh, for you to align kind of oropharyngeal airway as you're inserting the blade. The goal is to um, uh, insert that blade just to where you can see the tip while you're looking in the mouth. So first, eyes are looking in the mouth. And I'm going to let you peek here, but I'm going to be talking about using this as direct laryngoscopy. We'll talk about uh, the screen here uh, as we go as well. So when, uh, so with my eyes looking in the mouth, so when I insert the, uh, the other way that I could insert this blade into the mouth is sometimes you'll just take your fingers and use like a little scissor technique, or you can push your fingers apart in order to get through. Make sure that we don't have any lip 
caught uh, uh, under teeth or anything. Uh, we shouldn't be pulling back, but we don't want to cause uh, any trauma uh, to their lips as we insert. So uh, George Kovacs talks, and many experts talk about progressive uh, laryngoscopy. And, and the idea being that we are going to first uh, find the flagpole. So what we do is we just trace down the tongue until we arrive to the epiglottis. So at the base of every tongue is an epiglottis. Every is a strong word, but most tongues, there's an epiglottis. Uh, and so you arrive at the uh, base of uh, uh, the epiglot uh, base of the tongue, you're going to find the epiglottis. And then under the epiglottis is the glottic opening, which is between the vocal cords. And ar around the vocal cords is the cartilage structures. Uh, in particular, we're taking note of those arytenoid cartilage as we walk down. But the idea is that we're going to trace our way down the tongue. So a common mistake is to insert the blade in to the depth that you feel like it should be and then lifting up. The problem is if you don't see what you're anticipating, you don't know whether or not you need to go further in or pull out. Whereas if we just trace down the tongue, so if we put the blade into the mouth, is until where I can uh, no longer see it. Now, um, then uh, I will uh, lift up and see what I see. Now, as we lift, we're gonna be lifting in the direction of the handle. You'll notice that if you keep your elbow tucked in, this will keep you from levering back to keep that elbow tucked in. And as you walk down the, the tongue, now if you lift up and the tongue kind of wraps around your blade, a mannequin doesn't demonstrate that well, uh, that's a reminder that you need to go over to the right side of the mouth and just scoop up the tongue uh, as you walk your way down. So we're going to start with uh, inserting the blade just to where we can no longer see it. And then we're going to lift up and see what you're going to see. Now you'll notice that every time I'm intubating, my immediate response is to take my right hand, put it on the back of the patient's head and lift up. That's going to improve your view greatly. And you'll start to just do this as a large mover. And that maneuver of aligning that um, uh, laryngeal axis with their mouth uh, is so, so helpful. Um, so think of those two as going together. Now, obviously, if we have no C-spine precautions or, or whatnot. So insert the blade in until you can no longer see the tip, lift up. And in my view right now, I can just see the tip of the epiglottis. So I'm going to insert the blade a little bit further and then lift up. Now, now I can see a full view of the epiglottis. Now I'm going to try to get the tip of the blade just where the epiglottis meets the tongue, which is where the hyoepiglottic ligament is that I'm trying to engage. And as I engage that, you'll see that epiglottis flip up and kind of hug the underside of your uh, laryngeal, uh, your lar laryngoscope blade. Uh, now, once you are uh, into that position, then we'll lift in. Now, you'll notice that I'm pointing pretty much towards his belly button. Now, remember, that's because he only has one vertebrae, and I can't tip him back as we would. So often this would be much more of an angle, but in a mannequin you will find often you need to use a very low, but pulling only in that direction. Now, as I go to insert that tube, I'm gonna take the tube and put it in the right side of the mouth and try to keep it out of my line of view as long as possible. And at the last second, I'm just gonna insert that tube, the tip of it into the glottic opening. At this point, I'm gonna withdraw the stylet uh, a few centimeters. If you're wondering how far, the depth uh, that I, I'm pulling back to almost where it's back to the black line. So just the flexible part of the endotracheal tubes advancing uh, into the glottic opening. So I'll put that back in, so stylet. So we're gonna lift the head. Uh, so insert the blade so you can't uh, see to, to where you can just not see it anymore. Lift up, work your way down till you find the tip of the blade right at the uh, where the epiglottis meets the tongue uh, in that vollecula. Then you're going to take your stylet and you're going to insert uh, uh, in the uh, right side and keeping it to the right and posterior. And then you're going to insert your tube. Now, depending on the angle of the patient's head, remember their trachea goes towards their toes, not towards their shoulder blades, if that makes sense, like straight back. So when we're advancing your tube, we're going to withdraw your stylet and you're going to advance the tube and we're going to be thinking of tipping that tube towards their toes. 
So we're trying to push that towards their toes. Now, I did not do a good job of lubricating this mannequin beforehand, and I'm looking for lube there, uh, but, uh, but it's a little sticky. So we're going to insert that tube just into where a black line. I'll encourage you when you're inserting tubes to be using this as a finger motion, not as an arm motion. And what I'm doing is anchoring my hand to the face and then inserting with my fingers into uh, so that I don't exhibit a lot of pressure. Once <clears throat> my endotracheal tube's in place, I can, if I lost view of it, I can once again take that tube uh, and get that view. And then I like to bounce it around the vocal cords and see that it's actually between them and moving those structures. That's a really great confirmation that we're in the right spot. So the next uh, thing that uh, we would like to do is we would like to uh, work to, so after we have our uh, tube in place, uh, is we'll re remove our stylet and then confirm uh, the tube. So just to, I'm um, just referring to my notes here, if my computer will unfreeze, um, I, I walked my way down, so insert the blade till I can no longer see the tip of the blade, uh, lift up in the direction, <clears throat> of the handle. Then from there, uh, we're going to uh, see what we see. If we don't see the epiglottis, then we're going to insert the blade a little further. You can just release pressure and slide that down into the tongue. Uh, and then uh, uh, after we work our way down kind of in se a sequence of steps until we have a view of the epiglottis, then we'll try to get that blade tip, uh, if it's a Macintosh blade, into the vollecula, the corner where the epiglottis meets uh, the tongue. Uh, and then with, uh, with head lift often, we'll try to create a grade one view. In my next video, we'll talk about troubleshooting uh, that difficult airway, but it's really important for us to realize the structures down. So it's just following the tongue down uh, to uh, the epiglottis. Then once you uh, find the epiglottis, you're trying to find the vollecula where you can stick that uh, blade in and get it to engage and then lift up and hug the epiglottis as if my thumb is that uh, epiglottis, you engage that high epiglottic lumen and it will just come up and hug uh, the underside of the blade. Uh, and then uh, we'll try to create a grade one view. And often that can be accomplished just with more head lift uh, if you don't have a grade one view uh, orig originally. So common mistakes uh, is, uh, we, we've mentioned them, levering back is probably one of the most common that I'll see. If you walk in and you see somebody doing this with a laryngoscope, please ask them to stop. Because uh, we're not only risking uh, breaking teeth, but traumatizing uh, that uh, uh, those uh, soft tissues, those mucous membranes. Uh, the other thing that I see is that people lose their depth of perception. They get in here and then they're like trying to get really close. You'll notice if you take your finger and you follow your finger to your nose, there's a point at which you find it harder to tell how far away is my finger from my nose. Uh, and that's because you're, you're not looking uh, at a, both eyes as well. So really important for you to, um, uh, to actually uh, maintain biocular vision that you're seeing it at both eyes. Um, the, uh, uh, the other thing that I would say is a common mistake is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Uh, uh, most of the airway experts would recommend that you put forth your best approach in one technique. And if that fails and uh, you've done your best approach, then you move on to another technique. You don't just keep doing the same thing over and, and over again. Um, so uh, we, uh, so in the next video, I'm going to talk through uh, how we're going to manage when we don't get the view that we want. And we always want a grade one view. And when I'm referring that, I mean a grade one Cormac Lehane view where you can see the entirety of the vocal cords. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how to troubleshoot difficult laryngoscopy.